In this video, we'll learn how to compute the inverse of a function. I'll also draw a graph of the inverse, given the graph of our original function. So remember the relationship between an original function and the inverse of a function. And the relationship is that y equals f of x, if and only if x equals f inverse of y. So the idea is that the inverse function does the exact opposite of whatever the original function does. So if we were given a function like f of x equals 2x plus 3, a one-to-one -one function, and a function has to be one-to-one -one in order to have an inverse. If your function isn't one-to-one, -one, then it's not invertible. But 2x plus 3 is invertible. It passes the horizontal line test. So how would we go about finding a formula for f inverse of x? So what we have is y equals f of x. And what we want is y equals f inverse of x. So we have y equals 2x plus 3. And the relationship between an original function and its inverse is that the roles of x and y are reversed. We switch x and y. So everything that used to be an x now becomes a y. Everything that used to be a y now becomes an x. So when we do that here, what we end up with is an equation that looks like x equals 2y plus 3. Again, see the relationship between this equation, which was our original equation, and this new equation, which is our inverse function. And now all we have to do is solve this new equation for y. All right, so let's subtract 3 from both sides. And then we'll divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals x minus 3 divided by 2. And that's our formula for our inverse function. And again, we can see the relationship here. For example, what do we get when we plug 5 into our function f? f of 5 is going to be 2 times 5 plus 3. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. And notice what happens when we plug 13 into our inverse function. Our inverse function says x minus 3 divided by 2. So we get 13 minus 3 divided by 2. That's 10 divided by 2. That works out to be 5. So notice that when we plugged 5 into our original function, we got 13. And when we plugged 13 into our inverse function, we got 5. That's exactly the relationship that we're looking for when we talk about inverses. All right, what about the graph of an inverse function? Again, the relationship is that the x and y values get switched. So if this blue curve is our original graph, y equals f of x, let's graph y equals f inverse of x. Well, we notice that on our original f graph, we have the point negative 4 comma 0. So that means that on our new f inverse graph, we're going to have the point 0 comma negative 4, which is right down here. The x and y values get switched. On our original graph, we had 0, 2. So on our inverse graph, we're going to have the point 2, 0. And on our original graph, we had 5, 3. So on our inverse graph, we're going to have 3, 5. And so the graph of our inverse function looks a little something like this. And visually, what we can tell is that the graph of the inverse function looks like the graph of the original function flipped over a diagonal line y equals x. So there's a symmetry here, but it's kind of a diagonal flip symmetry. So the two graphs look the same, except one's been flipped over this diagonal line to obtain the other graph. 